Okay, I think we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today is October 6th, and we're having our meeting of the Arts and Culture Ad Hoc Committee. Um, I will, before we get started, I want to go ahead and introduce everybody who's on. Uh, we'll start with committee members. I'm Julie Eisel, I'm chair of the Ad Hoc Committee. Ed Driggs, committee member. Charter Picari, committee member. Thank you. And I think we have uh, Malcolm Graham will hopefully be joining us soon. And Mr. Winston was not able to join us. Could we have staff members introduce themselves, please? Priya Sarkar, Arts and Culture Officer. Julia Martin, City Manager's Office. Patrick Baker, City Attorney. Corey Burkarth with Communication and Marketing. Okay, if that's everybody, we're going to jump right into it. We apologize to the viewing audience that we're getting started a little late, but we have basically one thing on the agenda for today, and that is, as you may all know, um, we had our uh, we had our nominations Monday night at the council meeting at the business meeting for uh, the six seats on the Arts and Culture Advisory Board. Two of the 131 applicants did get six. Uh, votes and so they have been in the council approved those individuals um, that would be um, Ms. Patel and Mr. Tosco they will be appointed to that advisory board and then we have four seats that we still need to fill and by council rules anybody who got two nominations move forward and we will consider that pool of, of applicants for the other four seats um, we had 13 individuals who um, did receive at least two nominations. And so what we decided to do was to um, put that, to, to take that list of 13 and, and discuss it here at the ad hoc um, arts and culture advisory, advisory board meeting to consider the criteria of um, candidates for the board and, and really discuss what would be a good balance and then make a recommended list of um, a list of recommended candidates to our colleagues on the full council to fill those other four seats. And we could also offer some suggestions for alternates. So um, if you would please go to the next slide. Okay, so that covers that. Sorry, Priya, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Um, so let's go to the third slide. Okay, and with that, so that's that's the purpose of us meeting here today. And I'm gonna let Priya go ahead and give us a recap and talk about the process for voting for the final four seats. Thank you, Julie, and, and no worries, that was your slide. So um, you're right where you needed to be. Um, so I am just gonna briefly um, talk about how the today's meeting um, will go in terms of agenda. So I'll just briefly recap, uh, well, actually, uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, recapped the process, uh, but I'll just briefly touch on that and recap some of the best practices that uh, were discussed in terms of uh, the optimal profile of an advisory board um, that were discussed at the previous ad hoc committee meeting. Uh, and then um, uh, the mayor pro tem will lead a discussion of the 13 nominees who have uh, received at least two nominations in advance to this stage uh, and uh, will also lead a finalization of the recommended slate for those additional four uh, seats that are open as well as potentially a few alternates. Um, and then we'll just either the mayor pro tem or myself will just um, talk about um, wrapping up the next steps briefly. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. We can go ahead and go to the next one. Um, so this is a slide that uh, you may recall from the previous Arts and Culture Ad Hoc Committee meeting, just uh, summarizing the functions of the advisory board 
uh, as well as you can see the functions of some other uh, potential bodies um, that we discussed last time, um, such as grant review panels and potential other advisory groups that could be other ways for um, interested folks in the community, uh, including you know other applicants um, for the advisory board positions and, and, and nominees who may not eventually be appointed to the board. These are other ways that we can engage with them. Uh, and one of the key um, ad optional, you know, advisory groups, which uh, I don't see as optional, but is really critical to the upcoming cultural planning process, would be a steering committee that involves folks from across the community. Uh, and so that's just something to keep in mind. But the one here in blue that we're focusing on today is the advisory board, and you'll see the functions there. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Here again, most of this is information from past ad hoc committee meetings. The only thing added here is that, as the Mayor Pro Tem noted, two members were appointed at the council meeting on Monday night. Um, and so that's noted here, including the districts of um, each of those appointees. Next slide, please. Thank you. Here also is uh, a recap of some of the um, the characteristics that we talked about in the previous ad hoc committee meeting that we want to think about in uh, thinking about the optimal profile of an advisory board such as this. Um, and again, this uh, these would be characteristics that we think about holistically in terms of the full makeup of the board, the composition of the 18 seats. Um, but of course, you know, it's six positions that are appointed by city council. Uh, and so um, we just want to have these top of mind. You'll see here at the bottom, the item in blue, sex or gender, um, that is something that uh, we've added here um, because of course that is also um, one uh, parameter to consider when we're thinking of having a diverse advisory board that reflects the breadth of the Charlotte community. Next slide, please. And again, here, this is just recapping the process. So you'll see here the steps um, that uh, uh, have happened as of October 4th. And so two folks were appointed because they received at least six nominations and then everyone else who received at least two is being considered today and that's 13, 13 people. Uh, and so the next step is that this committee will look at and recommend a slate of four to think about rounding out those six city council appointed seats. Uh, and these are going to be based on um, those characteristics in the previous slide, thinking about the optimal profile of a board that reflects the Charlotte community. Thank you. And here I'm going to turn it back over to the mayor pro tem. Thank you, Priya. So um, for my committee members, we, Priya and I put together a uh, spreadsheet that we sent you all on the nominees for consideration that this slide shows the name of the nominees. I don't know if we have the spreadsheet available that we can show, but what we did is we just took exactly from their applications. We, we, um, took the information that was provided, name, the number of nominations they got, but also their district, ethnicity, gender, age, whether or not they're an independent artist, um, whether or not they represent an arts group, uh, if they're a staff member and that sort of thing. I did check with every one of them who is a staff member or, rep or represented that they are being paid by an organization and made sure that they understood that they do not qualify for funding if they do get appointed to the board. So they could be appointed if the council, if that's the council's will, but then that would preclude their organization from for applying from for funding. Everyone except one candidate did respond to me that they did understand that and, and they wanted to be, they still wanted to be considered. So Aisha Du is the only one that I have not heard back from yet um, that we would need to clarify that with. So of the 13 candidates, the other thing that we put in there was their discipline in their sector so that we could make a recommendation for these four seats that we feel is balanced with that criteria that Priya mentioned and that we have said in the past is important to us um, and send that to our colleagues. Nobody has to take our suggestions if they don't 
want to, but um, this is a way to really make sure that our six of the 18 seats represent what we say that we want in the community um, and have a good have a good balance of representation. So with that, what I did is I asked um, council members to I sort of split up these 14 seats and asked everybody to talk about a couple of the people and why you know what would be what they feel would be a good um, reason for that person to be appointed or what what it is that we want on the committee um, that that person might represent. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Mr. Driggs, if you will talk about the three candidates that you are going to um, highlight. If you'd rather me start, I could go ahead. Because you're on mute. There yeah, you are. Sorry. Uh, I looked at Debbie Abels, David Butler, and Beth Portapella. Uh, I'll say I don't know any of them personally, so I'm relying on the information from their applications and the, uh, the spreadsheet that we compiled. Uh, I'll start with uh, Debbie Abels, who is a uh, lady who lives in District 6. Uh, her age is 69. Her disciplinary sector is Music and Board of Governance. Uh, I felt looking at the full application from Ms. Abels that uh, she ha had a lot of very strong qualifications in terms of having an arts degree from Duke University, having worked uh, in the private sector, including as a CEO of a company, and having a history of support for the arts. So uh, the, the, the real advantage I see for her is that I think she has the kind of um, uh, professional experience that would help her to deal with some of the decisions that have to be made and to process the various priorities and arrive at good conclusions about how we achieve as much as possible with the resources that we're investing. So um, I thought she was uh, quite strong. Um, David Butler is a, uh, I guess, a photographer and has a business. Uh, he, he's described himself as a convener. He's 30 years old. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Ms. Abels is Caucasian, Mr. Butler is African-American. Uh, he got, uh, it's worth noting too, he got uh, four votes in our process. So I think one thing we can look at is how many votes uh, the people who we're talking about now got in the first round. Uh, David Butler got four and uh, he evinces an obvious passion as, a, uh, a, as an actual independent artist. Uh, uh, and therefore representing that kind of constituency uh, as a candidate. The last one I looked at was uh, Beth Quartapella, and um, she, she has a background. Uh, Beth is, uh, is 58 years old, Caucasian. Um, she has a background in advertising and media, um, so a business background. Uh, she worked with the Mint Auxiliary and the Mint Museum boards. So again, I think she has good board credentials. I'm not sure which segment she represents uh, in, in the arts uh, or where she would fit. And, and I think that raised a question in my mind as to, uh, if you will, which boxes we are trying to check. Like, are we trying to achieve a certain dispersion of uh, involvement in various areas of the arts? Uh, are we mainly focused on kind of credentials for board membership. Um, so uh, I think Ms. Guardapella uh, had uh, two nominations. So she's a bit lower on that list. Uh, so did Ms. Abels uh, compared to uh, uh, Mr. Butler among the three that I have. Um, if I had to express a personal preference, I did think that Ms. Abels application was very strong. Uh, you're muted, Julie, if you're speaking. You can't hear me? Uh, I couldn't, and now I can. Okay. I was just going to add, and please, anybody else, feel free to add comments if you know any of these folks. Um, but David was on the team that, um, along with Tim Miner, who's one of our considerations, they were on the team with the Foundation for the Carolinas that um, determined the grants for our CARES Act money. So um, by all accounts, that went really well. 
So he does have some experience in that. And I think for that reason, um, I've gotten to know him a little bit and I think that he's a strong candidate. Does anyone else have any comments they wanna make? Um, thank you, um, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. This is Malcolm. Welcome. Um, I apologize for running late, but um, duty called at beds for kids. So I was putting out a fire. Um, I have three um, individuals that I would like to uplift as well. Um, um, the first being Carla Lopez Aaron. Um, I know Carla personally. Um, she is a, a black, black uh, female. Uh, she received two votes. Uh, and I won't read her description, but you can see it there. Um, all the things that she's involved in, arts teacher, talking walls board member. She did a, a nice, nice show at the Beckler last year. Um, very, very experienced um, individual. I think she will add a lot of um, grassroots appeal uh, to the board uh, and a, a very good perspective that I think that we, uh, we can use. Uh, the second one is uh, former Mayor Pro Tem and Council Member Cindy, uh, Cindy Patterson. She received three votes. Um, she is a, a white female. Um, she's been around Charlotte for years. So she brings a sense of history um, uh, in terms of the Charlotte Ox community. Um, she knows uh, that community extremely well. Uh, she's a past board member of the Blumenthal, the Black or Ox Museum, the the ASC Arts and Science Council, um, extensive fundraising experience. I think Cindy uh, is uniquely qualified to really help us bridge the past um, to where we want to go in the future uh, with um, our new initiative. So I highly recommend her. Uh, and lastly is Asia Drew. Um, she received uh, three votes as well. Uh, she is a black female. Um, I just got a text from her uh, in reference to the question that you asked me, Mayor Pro Tem, by email, whether or not she understood the restrictions. Um, she replied yes. Uh, and so I, uh, I like to put her name forward as well. Uh, she currently serves on the ASC Advisory Board. Uh, she has an educational background in the arts, um, part-time actor and director. Uh, and I think it's really important that we have some influence um, on the board um, from the Arts and Science Council so that, again, that we don't lose any valuable information, um, data, concepts um, as we move forward. Uh, not to say that we're going to adopt any of that, right? But I think having a good perspective of the legacy organization uh, and how we move forward um, will serve the uh, the advisory board well. So those are the three that I would like to lift forward. Again, Paula Lopez, Aaron, Sydney Patterson, and Ms. Drew. Thank you. Thanks, Malcolm. And you didn't have a chance probably because you've been, children with beds is, is more important, I know. But um, we I had sent an email asking everybody to kind of divide up some of these individuals. And I don't know if you know Kevin Patterson, I'll speak to him. Pardon? You're muted. Yes, I know Kevin Patterson extremely well. Um, okay, he, could you speak to him? Well, um, I'm looking at it. He has five nominations. Um, so that, yep. kind of speaks, he, that kind of speaks for itself. I, I think he may have gotten one of mine as well. I'm one of the five that nominate him. He's an African-American male. He's been a, around this community uh, a long time as well. He is extremely, extremely qualified, um, former board member of the ASC. So that takes into consideration what I just mentioned about having uh, a perspective from the legacy organization. Uh, he chaired the ASC as well as the Public Arts Commission. Um, he former chair of the Gantt Center um, because, I mean, he's just uniquely qualified. So I will even put them on, I'll, I'll cheat and put on, on my list as well uh, as number number 1A, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Kevin is really, really sharp and um, uh, he's a black male, which I, I I think we need that perspective there too. So uh, yeah, he's, he's extremely qualified, no doubt about it. Yes, and I just actually ran into Lonnie Davis at lunch 
who is the founder of Jazz Art Charlotte, and she mentioned that they were asking for support for him. So um, Jazz Art Charlotte, of course, being uh, Lonnie O.C. Davis, who started basically um, the incredible jazz um, culture that we have here in Charlotte when they moved here after Hurricane Katrina. So um, I added that to the spreadsheet since lunchtime, so you all didn't see that. And Kevin is retired from IBM, so he does have a business background. Okay. Yes, and, and he has the most votes of uh, nominations, rather, anyone on the list. Um, yeah. and so I, I think that we need to take that into consideration as well. He's, he's one away from six. Yep, I agree with that. Thanks, Malcolm. Um, Mr. Bakari, did, I don't know if you had a chance to see the individuals that... Yes. Okay, perfect. I did. Uh, thank you for, and thank you for assigning me these three. Um, they're, they're good folks, uh, very well. Uh, uh, first, Amy Ossaker, uh, former ASC board member, former art gallery owner, experienced with fundraising and grant making, entrepreneur, Envision Charlotte. Amy is all over Charlotte in various ways, and I think um, in my experience in seeing her, uh, she would be a great addition to something like this. Uh, next up, uh, Tim Miner. Um, Co-founder of Charlotte is Creative and Charlotte Chapter of Creative Mornings developed the HUG grant program, work with numerous creatives. Um, I think that Tim Miner in this entire list is probably um, pound for pound the most unique and qualified person um, for a perspective that we could get on here, particularly from an entrepreneurship perspective and a creative's perspective, which we know is, is critical. And Brooke Muller, um, 20 plus years teaching and admin experience in arts and design and higher education, Dean of UNC Charlotte Arts and Architecture, uh, served in Netherlands as co-project leader for a $30 million EU project. So all three of those folks um, uh, are, are very uh, qualified. Uh, I, I will add on uh, beyond that, May, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, to a couple of things you, you opened us up with for this conversation, just to kind of toss these out. Uh, one item is, I'd be very interested in aligning our process, which I would argue is probably of the 18 people, um, uh, 18 appointments, the most connected to the will of the broader people of Charlotte, just given our representative nature, um, that it's important to understand the timeline, if not even more so, who the other groups from mayor to private sector and others are appointing. Just because, you know, we're kind of, I think we're in the lead right now in doing this, but if there's a way for us to see that, that might help us understand in, in our selection process what things are missing. Um, I'm sure everyone feels like they could play that role, um, but I don't know who the best is to actually do that. And I just I just bring that forth for us to contemplate as we kind of take next steps. Steps. I'd also mention just from Monday night and kind of what we learned in, in the pain of the process and discussion. I think there are some others that have still some folks they want to point and whether they should have by now or not. I think just given the fact that we now are seeing a list of everyone's kind of elements and, and desires, um, it might not be a bad idea for us to consider allowing folks with perhaps a higher threshold to say, if you can go rally up the support of three other colleagues so that you get to four in a certain very quick time frame to not slow us down, you can have that those folks added for consideration because right now I think we're back to a square one beyond the two people we've appointed um, to decide who gets the other four slots and we're going to have to have conversations amongst each other in lobby so I just want to make sure just because we might have missed a process element here or there it might not be a bad idea for us to put a kind of a high bar but then ha be, have the ability for us to reach around to our folks and um, and see if we can garner uh, support from our colleagues. For myself, there are two people that didn't make this list that I think are no-brainers that I would, if we do that, try to go get support for. They got my votes, but I, I guess no, none other. And I blame myself a little because I didn't go around and lobby for them. But Keith Cradle, who's doing amazing work in this community, uh, and Marty Visor, uh, a very unique perspective. So uh, just just thoughts for consideration for us. Yeah, and um, I, I know, I mean, to be clear, out of 131 people, we could have nominated a lot of these folks who are really strong. Um, I think there was some question with Keith, maybe about whether he wanted to apply for funding, um, because I, I remember him being identified as a really strong candidate. 
But in the end, I think we'd have to go back and amend our rules to be able to consider anybody else that didn't have two votes. So I, that's what the conversation was the other night. And I'm hesitant to do that this coming Monday night, honestly, because then it's gonna open up that Pandora's box on our other committees. Um, and we, we kind of went through all of that this past Monday as to, we took a vote whether we wanted to do that or not. Um, and people have, you know, the vote passed that we didn't want to change the rules in real time. So I would say the other option is that with some of those indiv individuals, you talk to the mayor about her three votes. Um, and, you know, and also Priya can identify people, and I won't speak for you, Priya, but as you put together other groups that are going to have input, um, I think it is important to go back into our list of individuals that maybe just didn't know enough people. It certainly is not a statement of how qualified they are at all, but to your point, it's just, did they know enough people? And Mayor Pritzen, I, I think those are valid points. I, I just, on the, the item as it relates to council, and, and I agree, like we don't want to, my idea is almost kind of in a good faith aspect to avoid repeating that again. We, we know some people feel like they didn't fully understand what they need to do. And I'll, I, while I understood what we need to do, because it is our normal process, I, I'll be the first to admit, I didn't go around thinking that I needed to lobby for a couple of the folks that I that I probably would have in hindsight. So if, if we all agree, let's not do that, let's not waste time, that's fine. And I, I'll, I'll leave that behind. But if there's an opportunity for us to, you know, proactively get ahead of a frustration that perhaps a couple of days offline could then solve an online problem from not occurring. I think that's something we, we I don't think we don't need to decide that now, but perhaps you and the mayor and some others have a discussion and see if that's viable and then we go back to it. But I think the most important point of, of what I wanted to raise up that I mentioned is I think there's really no reason why we shouldn't see the mayor and the private sector's appointments before we get to the final phase of narrowing things down. I'm sure everyone wants to wait a little bit on that. Uh, and I'm sure they'd like to get us out of the way first because the other stuff will be kind of individuals or behind closed doors decide. But I think that's even more of a reason why we should be the final dialogue and discussion of what we're appointing to round out a board once we see those other appointments. Okay, um, that might be tricky because I think the mayor is waiting to see what our nominations are. Um, so it's a bit of a chicken and the egg. We do have this, Priya, maybe you might mention, maybe you know more about that than I do, but I know you're really trying to get us to make our decisions by Monday, the 11th. Not to lobby, uh -huh. I just lobbed it to you, so. Yeah, no, 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 not a problem. Um, I, I would just say my understanding is that um, what you just said, that I believe the both the mayor and the private sector are awaiting the results of, um, of this process to then appoint the remaining seats. That's my understanding in terms of um, sequence. Um, I, uh, I I was just going to note, I think um, from, from my perspective, I, uh, as I think about timing, timeline, um, I'm just thinking about uh, trying to have the advisory board in place sooner than later, um, because then I can start to work with the advisory board to uh, prepare the ground for the cultural planning process. Uh, and um, I think, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, we, uh, I think you may have shared with the committee um, by email um, some of the, the ways that delaying the appointment of the advisory board kind of could push, you know, push that cultural planning process um, pretty far out, even if it's a few, a few weeks now could wind up actually pushing the, um, the community engagement portion and by a few months into kind of summertime, which is, uh, in my experience, a really uh, undesirable time to try to engage people because they're not really available um, in summer. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We don't want to push the timeline, but I don't think, I mean, this isn't a case of, well, we have to do it, and then the mayor, and then the private sector. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, no one's brought it up to this point, and they're probably, you know, just waiting till we're done, and then they decide what they want to do from there. And 
I don't think there's any reason, especially given that it's one person and their decision and then a private sector group that can decide behind closed doors and then tell us that they can't get that done before we then go into this next post to not delay the timeline. Everyone's going to want to be after. I, I, I understand the desire for that. I'm just saying if you're going to make a logical argument of which body's appointments is most reflective of the community desire and need, it would be this body on city council. And that, that would need mean that us having the last say, looking at all of the folks and then placing in what gaps exist beyond that would probably make the most sense. Well, let me, let's have that conversation after this meeting and let me find out what, you know, where the mayor is with her appointments. Um, because I'm not sure how we solve that if there's if the foundation is saying, for example, no, 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 we're going to wait till you guys make your call. Um, we don't want to postpone it indefinitely. We do have an issue with our funding cycle um, for this first round of disbursements because of, um, as Priya mentioned, you know, we got to get an RFP out. We've got there's a lot that has to be done before we can even talk about funding, um, and we want to make sure we're not. Well, going to get ourselves behind on that. So I'll, I'll talk to the mayor about it, Tark. And I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I can see the value in that. But it's sort of, you know, six of one half dozen the other in terms of pros and cons. So, Madam Chair, I'd just like to add my voice to that. I think the idea that we're the ones that have to go first, uh, which nobody wants, uh, is not necessarily right. And I think the only way you address that is have some provision for us to have another look when we know what the others are proposing to do. Um, because uh, uh, again, we, we are uh, the council, we're the ones who are really the custodians of the city's money. And um, I'm not completely comfortable with everybody else looking at what we did and then potentially positioning themselves or whatever I mean, I'm very hopeful that if we did have one opportunity to look at all the nominees, we would recognize quickly that we had a perfect group and it was great. But if it doesn't feel like that and we're then told, sorry, you guys had your chance and you did what you did and now you have to live with what everybody else did, it doesn't feel right to me. So I'm just, saying, I'm just saying, I think we ought to have some opportunity to have another look when we know what the others want to do. We, we, we would put names out and we would provisionally nominate our people, the only, I think, uh, if Mr. Bakari agrees, the only qualification would be a provision within a week or so to, uh, to consider the names of others who are being offered and see whether that has any impact on the choices that we made. Okay, I mean, if yeah. we did, I, would, I wouldn't really want to put names out provisionally because it's awfully hard to tell somebody that we would have voted for them except for, um, so I don't know, Malcolm, if you have an opinion on that or Priya, if you want to chime in on that. I, I really don't have a, a, an opinion on it, right? I think at some point somebody has to go first. Uh, historically, the council would do that. And if the mayor had any appointments, she will fill in the gaps where there are gaps. And that that's a, that has been a practice that has worked. Um, I don't, like I said at our last meeting, I, I'm just a big believer in and keeping it simple um, before we started the process, I think we should just complete it and, and move forward. Okay, I do have three other people that I, I was gonna talk about. So let me just get through those and then we can figure out where we're gonna go with this. Um, let me pull up my list. Okay, so I have Lauren Batten, Davida Galloway, and Marcy Kelso. Um, Lauren is an independent nonprofit consultant. Um, I think what was compelling about her application is that she was a former staff member in the 90s of the Arts and Science Council. So, Ed, or Malcolm, to your point, it does give us a lot of historic information about the arts over the past few decades in Charlotte. Um, that was something that I thought was interesting. And as a consultant, she worked on the design phase of the Charmick Library Task Force back after the recession uh, for those of you who were around, if you remember, a lot of our libraries had to close because of the recession. And the library went through an extensive task force and Lauren was involved in that. Um, and from that came the creation of the Library Foundation. And I think that speaks to some really interesting experience too, when you're talking about um, an arts sector that had to go through a major transformation and came out 
a lot stronger because of it. So um, I think Lauren could, you know, offer some real experience there. Um, Davida Galloway, a lot of people know Davida. She is one of the co-founders of Hugh House, along with um, Daley Arrington and David Butler. Um, Davida is a co-owner of uh, Duff and Swat, which is a for-profit organization um, that offers a, well, and if somebody else can explain Duff and Swat better, please go ahead and do that. But basically, it, it from the way I understand it, it really gives a space and platform to artists as entrepreneurs to build their capacity and their art businesses. Um, and please jump in if you know more about Duff and Swat than I do. Um, but Davida is, you know, has a very interesting background to offer that kind of experience as well. And then the other person is Marcy Kelso. And Marcy is, um, she's one of the few people, I think we also mentioned um, Brooke Mueller, who had the experience in the Netherlands. Marcy has experience in the film industry. Um, I think she worked for the Virginia Film Department for years. Um, she, yeah, she was in marketing for the film industry in Virginia and for the city of Charlotte. For Charlotte as a city. Uh, she spent 10 years as the director of the Light Factory, which many of you know the Light Factory. It's a contemporary museum of photography, photography and film. And she currently owns an ad agency with her husband um, at advertising and PR. So she's got a lot of interesting um, experience to offer as well. So those were the three candidates that I was going to highlight. Um, and again, if anybody um, would like to um, chime in on those individuals we can, you please do. But I think really what it comes down to right now is that we've got to make a decision because we, you know, the point of this meeting was to offer a slate of recommendations to the full council. Now we can do that because I think what, what Tark is saying is that ideally, what Ed said, ideally we wouldn't have to go first because we want to make sure our community is represented that said, I'm not sure what the outcome of that is going to be. We can't, you know, we can't force the foundation to, to tell us who they're going to name. I would hope that Priya would let everybody know she needs these names by a certain time so that she can keep on track. So perhaps what we can do right now is instead of offering a slate of four people as our recommended votes for Monday night, Perhaps we can we cut down this list and say who are really our top votes. Uh, for instance, Kevin Patterson did have five votes. He was awfully close to getting nominated. To me, it would seem like he would be somebody that we would put on a slate of of um, cons considerations, if you will. Um, do you think we can get down to six or seven people, or even eight people, and to move forward with, and then see if we can get some answers from the other two? Uh, the mayor and the foundation, or what would y'all say? I'm I'm ready to cut it down to four, and um, but I'll I'll yield to the will of the committee. Um, but I'm I'm willing to do what we were supposed to do today. Yeah, I I think this is probably fair if you think about the fact that this is the exact exercise we're all we all should be doing behind the scenes with our colleagues asking, explaining, making the cases for individuals and seeing if we can garner support of one of their four votes. So I, I think it's a great example publicly amongst the, you know, the, the four of us and then with Braxton as well, uh, rounding out uh, this committee that we do that. I, I, I mean, I'd start by saying um, Tim Miner um, seems like an excellent choice to add on that, at that short list. But I, I think, uh, again, we, 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 we do that in the spirit of understanding this is the, the you know, four of us kind of finding some agreement on who we might vote for, understanding, though, that as we have conversations with other colleagues, they might make the case for another. We might start kind of parsing and divvying up those, um, those um, votes. If we have to stand behind each one and say, that's where my vote's going, I don't know if I'm okay. down with that. But if we have to sit here and say, well, what four could we arrive on? I I'm okay with that for this snapshot in time. Okay. Well, why don't each one of you throw out two or three names that you really feel strongly about and see where we land on that. And then 
will have to come because as we know, even if we just had four names and all of us said, these are the only four we would consider, which isn't going to happen. Council can still do whatever they want with these 13. So, um, you know, why don't we try to get, if, if each one of you can just specify right now who you feel pretty strongly about would be a great addition regardless, um, then we, we put that as sort of our, you know, next step to suggest to council, but, um, and then see where we, what we can do with getting the mayor to name her people and find out where we are with the foundation. So, so Madam Chair, are we trying to get to four now or are we trying to get to seven? I think we can go to seven. Um, I think that gives us more to work with. I don't want to necessarily cut anyone out, but if you don't have seven, that's okay. But, you know, name who you think is a strong contender. Okay, I'll, I'll start and, and I'll be consistent uh, with the four that I named. Um, Kevin Patterson, Colin lopez Aaron. Sydney Patterson and Asia Drew. Okay. Aisha. Aisha, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's late. Okay. Uh, Ed, how about you? So I agree. Kevin Patterson and Tim Miner. Uh, I really like Debbie Abels. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, Tim Miner, no brainer. Uh, I'd add Amy Ostaker, who hadn't been mentioned in that list. And um, I think then if I said Brooke Muller as well, who I mentioned just to kind of add to there right now, uh, that would probably, I think if my counting is correct, put us at eight so far. I think I have nine. Nine, maybe? Okay. Yeah, no, I counted. Okay, twice. Yeah, we, that would be at eight, and you'd say Brooke. Okay. Um, I would have David Butler in there uh, because of the work he's done with Hugh House, but also, because one thing, and Kevin fits this description also, but in terms of bringing together artists of color, um, I think. Kevin clearly with his position on 100 Black Men, his past president, Jazz Art Charlotte, uh, Gantt Center is focused on some of those artists of color. And I think that that's an important criteria. Kevin fits that and so does David. Um, Cause that is what Hugh House does is they help artists of color become entrepreneurs um, and build capacity in their organization. Um, and then I would also have included Carla because I want to make sure that we have working artists represented. Um, I guess David is a working artist as well, but we don't have, in, of all of that list, really don't have much in the way of working artists. And I think that's going to be a community responsibility. David's a working artist, like I said. Um, so that's what I, why I would leave Carla involved as well as a professional full-time artist. So why don't we keep it simple? And as was said earlier, and just say the first cut of this committee's decision was to, was to bring it from 13 to 10. So we didn't go over the top down to four, right? We didn't have to sit here and debate it out where honestly, I don't know that I'm prepared to have a debate to bring it from 10 to, to seven unless we, you know, we're kind of horse trading a little of which I don't know that that is all that valuable in the end. So, I mean, that, that way we'll have done our job. We will have presented it publicly and then we'll have started a narrowing of the list of which I think all four of us at least can agree. That's a good narrowing that there'll probably be four votes of support to say that narrowing. And then we take it down another level offline. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. I, I think we can do that and I think that's nine. That's what I have. Nine. Okay, so of those nine people, then I think we just have to have these conversations offline. I can't promise you we're not gonna stick with the vote on, on October 11th, but I will work very hard to get an answer from the mayor and the foundation as to when they're gonna make their appointments. And Priya, I think we'll, we could talk about that um, to figure out how to do that. But 
the most important thing is that we really try to stay on schedule and we're not the only ones who have to try to do that. The mayor and the foundation needs to do that too because we don't wanna jeopardize this funding cycle. That's the most important thing. So Madam Chair, could we just look at who the four are that uh, are not on the list? Because uh, this was done sort of by a process uh, of uh, appointment rather than elimination, but who, who are the four that didn't make it through to this? Right, because I can see the value in all of them too. So. Um, it would be Davida, um, Lauren Batten, F. Portapella, and Marcy Kelso. So um, I think Lauren, to me, Lauren and Cindy fit a similar profile. Cindy Patterson, both being consultants that, that have done work in the in the nonprofit sector. Um, we have a couple people that have board governance experience. The board governance, and Priya, maybe you have a certain thought about this, but I think the foundation is going to end up putting people on there that have board governance experience. So um, I think if it's going to be board governance, I looked at somebody like Kevin Patterson, who again has experience with boards that probably are a little bit different than some of the boards that we we will get from the foundation, especially representing artists of color. Um, Marcy has a very interesting background, you know, and I just, as does Davida. So I think we just have to really make an effort to talk to each other and talk to our colleagues this week about this. I think it would be more useful to the full council if we could trim this list by at least a couple more because uh, we're basically taking the whole question back to them, only yeah, slightly yeah. modified. That's what. That's not what we thought we were going to do in this meeting. So, so if we, I don't envision. It's not clear. This is correct. But I would envision that if we want working artists, it's going to be up to us to make those appointments. I'm not sure that's what the foundation will be doing because they're going to be focusing on funders. And the mayor can certainly fill that, that gap. Um, but I would like to see some working creatives um, fill those seats. I guess if we look at the duplicates here, where would the duplication come from? Um, and again, that's Tim Minor, Kevin Patterson, Carla, Aaron Lopez, Cindy Patterson, Aisha Du, Debbie, um, Abels, Amy Osaker, Brooke Mueller, and David uh, Butler. Of those, does anyone see any duplication in skill sets? I think there are, I'd have to study this a little further to figure out which are the most redundant, if you will, but uh, yeah. I think there are. May I make one suggestion as uh, something to consider in terms of the artists and creatives and creative industries? Um, there is something to also maybe look at in these skill sets is, um, experience in uh, kind of supporting artists and creatives, you know, maybe cultivating and supporting creative industries, um, that kind of thing uh, in terms of, you know, professional support. Um, I don't think that is a stand-in for experience as a working artist or creative, uh, but um, it's just another, you know, a potentially valuable skill set to have on the board in addition to being a, a working artist or creative. Okay, and I think that's where Tim and David um, probably fit that mm -hmm. area. And, and pot potentially a couple of those who were not on the shorter list of nine. Uh, right, Davida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And potentially Marcy Kelso as, as a film commissioner. 
Yeah. Just noting that's another skill set. Well, um, I mean, I think, you know, our goal was to come up with a slate of four from this meeting, but I don't know that we can't stick with the 13 and have the conversations this week, especially if we don't know what the mayor and the foundation is doing, um, uh, or you you just stick with everybody with four votes on up. I don't, maybe that's not the right way either, but um, we have the spreadsheet that we can continue to add to if people have additional comments as to why they think that person is the right, you know, would be a strong candidate and we add to that and then share that with all of our colleagues and just and lobby for it. That's that's how people got more than two votes. So what are we taking back to full council? At this point, it's the 13 and I would provide that spreadsheet to people. And, and again, that's not, you know, that's just taking what everybody has said. Um, I mean, that the 13, I'm sorry, is just what everybody said in their applications. Um, but then we added the, the sector information. Um, I mean, I think at this point, really all you can do is really say, who's a duplicate on here? Maybe that there's two people that would serve the same purpose. And then, so let's move forward with one of them. Maybe you could take what you've heard in this meeting and touch base with the mayor and with the private funders and uh, do a little bit of blocking out, you know, which various segments are likely to be covered by whom. And then that might guide the council, especially if we can't get to a process where we get a look at their nominees, at least have a general understanding about uh, what the mayor intends to do and what they intend to do, and therefore uh, where our nominees fit in. Okay. And and then you could take this list and the conversation we've just had and overlay uh, whatever you're able to learn in order to prioritize among our people. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Um, we just have to be willing then to pick up the phone and talk to each other this week. I think that's, you know, to be frank, when people were um, commenting Monday night about individuals they didn't want to get, didn't they have moved forward, they weren't returning phone calls either. And we got to return phone calls to each other and talk about who you want, who you really feel strongly about. I mean, that's really the, the way to get it done. So any, any last comments? I'm sorry, could you tell me again who the four are that wouldn't be among our, are we not even going to now uh, identify the nine? Are we just gonna go with the 13 and, and, and not talk about the four that didn't make it in this conversation? What do you, Priya, what do you recommend? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question, Councilmember Drakes. Do you mean the full slate of 13 or the nine that were sort of on a slightly shorter list during this conversation? Yeah, that is the or question. The which which mm -hmm. are, are we going to suggest the nine or from what I'm now hearing, are we actually just going to go ahead and move the 13 forward and not attempt uh, any separation as a result of this meeting? Um, I think what I heard a moment ago um, was potential for um, Mayor Pro Tem to uh, gather some more information from the mayor and the foundation um, regarding those appointments uh, and then um, use that information to maybe shorten this list even further. Let me know if I, if I misunderstood that suggestion. Well, you say even further, my question is, once you get that in, input, uh, Madam Chair, will you be looking at all 13 to see, or will you take into account that we did have nine priority names as a result of this conversation? I can, I will share with the mayor the nine priority names and also mention the other four as alternates that we also felt like 
were strong contenders because they fit a need that you know we think is important. Right. I, I think it'll come down to uh, maybe a tough choice between two people who are in the same space in order to get our number down. Like everybody on this list would be a valuable participant. So uh, we may have to find a you know criterion that uh, identifies which of these qualified people would be uh, somewhat redundant with somebody else according to what we're trying to achieve and 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 do the uh, do the winnowing that way because you know talking about better or not as good is not really relevant here we're we're dealing with the situation of uh, how do we create the best composition for the group yeah yeah that's tough. I mean, we've never done this before, so it is. It makes it kind of hard. Usually, it just boils down to we talk to each other about it. But, but this is creating a whole new board. So, um, I mean, and I think we also should rank those that enough of us mentioned, i.e., Kevin Patterson, and he did have five votes from council members. Um, so, to me, he would be one that I would think we would all say. Definitely somebody we would recommend. I think Tim Miner sort of stands out too. Uh, yeah. And um, anyway, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I would say that uh, pending your conversations with others, we are not dropping from consideration anybody. It's not really up to us to do that anyway. So you, you've got the people that we thought were strong. You now apply the overlay from what you learn of. Uh, uh, you know, which openings we need to try and fill and see if that suggests a shorter list. But if, if, where we stand right now, you would have to get back to us with the results of those conversations and just let us know. And, and we can all talk to each other from there. I will, I will do that. Ma yeah. Mayor Pro Tem, I have an idea that might be helpful, just kind of threading the needle here. Um, I think it's it's irrelevant for us to give 13 versus 9. I mean, it, it doesn't help, right? It, it's <laughs> We have to have the conversations. I think the question is, can we all have the conversations of which it'll really be our normal kind of process of individual back conversation, horse trading, where we say, well, I like this person. What do, who do you like and who would I support for you for you to support this person? I'm hopeful that happens and I'm hopeful that gets us to four votes for, of six. However, if that doesn't happen, perhaps what we need to do right now is say, if there is no consensus or no one has done this work, these are the four people that the four of us on this committee sat and in that mini process agreed on. And I think we start by saying, just quickly going around the room and saying, if only if all of us could only say one name, who would that be? And then we let that default default as the four, but but clearly stated as the backup if others aren't willing or don't have the conversations they need to. Okay. You want to go? You want to do it? Ed, do you want to go first? <laughs> so uh, we have one name each. Is that it? Let's just see how it goes. Sure. <laughs> four, honestly, I mean, I would do four names because I don't, I, four that I, I, I still have a hard time getting it to four, but I couldn't say one exclusion of others. But I think, it, it, again, we could prolong this and take hours. I think if we're just going to try to get to a quick example of four of us negotiating our way to, like, these would be the four we'd recommend if we were kind of individually horse trading our way to do it. I mean, you know, I don't. I... May, may I make a, a suggestion or an observation? Please. <laughs> um, so I think in, in terms of the... Um, Kind of the, what I understand to be the usual process. Um, that um, I think the challenge with that is that uh, individuals kind of are are voted for or you know appointed kind of a little bit in isolation, not complete isolation. I understand what you're saying, Councilmember Bakari, in terms of the the kind of conversations and exchange that happens. Um, but I guess what I um, just noting here is that the, um, the goal of this conversation and this step was to hopefully look at it 
as a slate um, to kind of try to make sure multiple things are kind of represented um, in, you know, kind of a, as much in context of, you know, other, other appointees as possible. Um, and in a way, it seems like with the discussion of the slightly shorter list of nine, um, that this group has a bit of the beginnings of a slate in that um, there are three folks who were mentioned by this group, Tim Miner, Kevin, Kevin Patterson, and Carla Aaron Lopez as multiple members of this group, you know, feeling, uh, putting out there as strong candidates. So, um, you know, I wonder if that is maybe a helpful place to start if, if you were to kind of think of those as a potential beginnings of a slate and then who then might round that out as the fourth. Sure. Yeah, because I think if we had those three, I would I would probably then from a balance, I might go with Amy, which not necessarily was in my first round of consideration, but I just think it's an interesting balance. I, su I support that. I'd be okay with that. Well, that would be, that would probably be my four then. Um, who are your, Ed, Chark? I, I agree with uh, what Priya just said, plus Amy. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Um, Malcolm? Um, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, the four that I may name already, Patterson, Drew, Patterson, and Aaron, Sydney, and Kevin. Patterson, we got, yeah. Two Pattersons, Kevin and Sid, um, Sydney, um, Aaron, and Drew. Carla, Aaron. Yeah, Car Carlos Lopez, Aaron, Kevin Patterson, Sydney Patterson, and Drew. Oh, Cindy, Cindy, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm having a tough time articulating this afternoon. I'm okay. exhausted. Yeah. Could you, uh, Madam Chair, could you say again the four names that we were just discussing? The just four for that three of us said were Kevin Patterson, Tim Miner, Carla Aaron Lopez, Amy Osaker. Then Malcolm added Cindy Patterson and Aisha Dew. So, so two of the four that we're talking about were actually uh, the preferred nominees of Mr. Graham. I think that's pretty good representation for one member of the committee. and. I would hope that we could come together around those four names. Okay. okay. Well, we can put them down as alternates too. Again, you know, it might be all out the window if people say I had a whole different list. So, um, you know, do you want to- This is a good backup plan because this is just about Mayor Pertem. It's just about a backup in case everyone doesn't do what they're supposed to do, which is this offline in a, in a productive way. So I think those four plus the two other alternates that Malcolm liked, that, I mean, we, hopefully we don't have to use this, but if we do, we can say, yeah. well, this was the recommendation of us sitting down with Priya, thinking about it from a slate perspective. Yeah, I, put, I would put Marcy Kelso then in, as an alternate too, just because I think it's a totally different. Um, and that would give us four and then three alternates. If you so guys, that's, a good, that's a good result for this meeting to have four and three alternates and much better than just sort of leaving here uh, with nine or 13 and not being sure which. So uh, if you can move forward with those uh, and we will talk to each other and, and modify as needed, but uh, I move think- Move to approve. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Nothing's binding here, I, I think. We all good with that? Yeah, without objection, this committee will suggest that. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then, you know, if there's people on there that are still really, really strong, we tell the mayor, take a look at our list, at the whole list, and maybe we get it from the mayor. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to um, the foundation too and see where their, what their thoughts are on their timing. 
Yeah, I think the, the list we have has got good nomination support, uh, has some diversity in it, uh, includes artists. So it does check the boxes. It's not the only list that would check the boxes, but I, I, I think it's a great, uh, you know, it's a great starting point, something we can offer. So, okay. so we good. Okay. Good job, everybody. We did it. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. Okay, I will just one last thought. We only have one artist in there, one working artist. Which, well, talk to the mayor and find out what she's going to do. Right. Otherwise, I would leave David Butler on as a uh, an alternate as well as an artist. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yes. Buddy, I think we're good for now. We got four, four on the slate, four alternates. Yes. Okay. That's good work. Okay. With that, we work. And unless Priya, do you have any comments to wrap up? Just that we did it in the uh, one hour assigned, if we count it from when we actually started. So great okay. job, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Good job, Madam Chair. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thanks.